Firstly, I would like to thank the committee for this invitation. Um, yes, the title of my presentation is Restrict Assessed Materials in Biological Sample Preparation for the Determination of Metals and Organic Molecules. Firstly, I would like to talk in about the biological samples. And biological samples are very complicated samples, very complicated matrices mainly due to the presence of uh, many concomitant molecules, like, for example, proteins. Uh, when we're talking about the blood, for example, we have a big amount of proteins that can be, uh, can, um, is, is, uh, these proteins are very complicated in analytical procedure because we can have a, a modification of the extraction proportion and difficult to validate the methods among others. In this way, many strategies have been carried out in order to eliminate the proteins from biological samples before uh, the analysis in order to, to facilitate the analytical procedure. Um, many strategies have been used to eliminate the proteins. And the, the first of one, probably this is the protein precipitation by using some solvent, for example. But this procedure is, have, uh, has some problems for as for example, the dilution of the sample, the loss of some analyte together with the precipitate and the modification of the pH among others. In this way, um, some researchers have uh, uh, developed some intelligent materials that can be used to in sample preparation protocols in order to capture the analytes and eliminate the proteins. Uh, these materials are called the restricted assess materials and they consist in the modification of conventional sorbents in order to confer this material the ability to exclude proteins. Uh, my group uh, has worked with this material since uh, some years ago. And we start with the restrict assessed molecular imprinted polymers. Um, in order to remember, molecular imprinted polymers are uh, synthetic polymers that contain selective binding sites to specific molecules. And the preparation of a molecular imprinted polymers, polymer is very simple we can put in, in the laboratory, we can synthesize the polymer, put together a template, uh, a specific molecule, and functional monomers. These functional monomers are distributed around the template in specific positions, according to the stereochemical and the, by the, the, the groups, the chemical groups. And after this distribution, after the, the equilibrium is reached, we can add in this system a crosslinker, and this crosslinker can fixate the, the functional mo monomers around the uh, template molecules. Uh, after this, we can wash the polymer with a wash solution, removing the template and some residues from the synthesis. And I have in the end the molecular imprinted polymer with uh, selective binding sites to the template molecule. Um, at this point, the, 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 the molecular imprinted polymer can be used for different sample preparation protocols, but we have some problems when this material is put together a uh, biological sample, mainly due to the presence of proteins. The proteins of this, from the sample can bind around the template, around the, the, the polymer uh, and, and the surface of this polymer. Uh, blocking the, the selective binding sites and causing several problems in terms of sensitivity and selectivity of these polymers. To solve this problem, some years ago, Professor Aguinaga proposed the concept of restrict assess molecular imprinted polymers. After this point, the, the molecular imprinted polymer was treated with hydrophilic monomers that were positioned around the, 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 the polymer in their surface, in, in its surface. And these hydrophilic groups can act as a barrier 
they can avoid the bind of proteins from the sample. You can see that the selective binding sites are maintained without hydrophilic groups. And these selective binding sites can, of course, bind to the template again. Uh, this concept was developed uh, 20 years ago. And the different strategies to obtain restricted access materials have been developed. Here I have a graphical abstract of the the mechanism of of the of a, me a mechanism to exclude the protein and capture the molecules. Here I have a restricted access molecular imprinted polymer with selective binding sites to these molecules. And here I have the representation of a biological sample with proteins and with small molecules. Uh, if the pH of the medium is higher than the isoelectrical point of the protein and the material, we have the proteins in the negative form and the material also in the negative form. This charge can cause an electrostatic repulsion, uh, what can, can be responsible to exclude the protein. At the same time, the small analytes can uh, be captured by the selective binding sites. After this extraction section, we can use an eluent to remove the, the retained the analytes that they are conducive to uh, analytical technique like mass, mass spectrometer, for example. My group has, uh, has worked in this area. And our first work was developed by Gabriel some years ago at the that uh, Gabriel synthesized, synthesized a um, molecular, a restricted access molecular imprinted polymer selective to chlorpromazine by the conventional procedure. Here, Gabriel used metacrylic acid as functional monomer, uh, ethylenoglycol metacrylate as cross linker, chlorpromazine as template. And uh, after the MIP synthesis, the polymer was treated with glycidyl dimetacrylate and hydroxyl metacrylate that are uh, hydrophilic monomers. And this, these monomers were, were inserted around the template, around the polymer, resulting in the uh, restricted access molecular imprinted polymer. At this point, Gabriel apprised the uh, ability to exclude protein of this, this polymer. And the result was uh, about 90% uh, of efficiency. In other words, this material, if, if I percolate through this material, a uh, protein solution, this material is able to exclude about 90% of these proteins. 90% is a good result, but if I think in terms of uh, biological sample, I have the rotation of about 10% of the proteins percolate to it. 10% it's a, it's a high amount of proteins in terms of biological sample. And for this reason, we propose the modification of this polymer in order to improve the ability to exclude proteins. In this way, we propose the, the insertion of a BSA above in serobumin layer around this polymer based on this reference. And uh, it's interesting because I use a protein layer to exclude proteins. But this protein layer is fixed around the, the, the particles uh, by use glutaraldehyde, that is a cross linker. And glutaraldehyde is responsible to interconnect the molecules of BSA uh, through the amine groups. And we have the formation of a capsule. Of course, we use a small amount of protein and the slim of this capsule is very low. And we can control this, this layer based on the amount of, uh, of BSA and the glutaraldehyde. In this way, we have a BSA layer that can be used to avoid that other proteins from the sample bind to the surface of the material. But this layer can, uh, some small analytes can penetrate through this layer and access the selective binding sites. The principle, uh, the mechanism is 
similar to this, when I have a biological sample with proteins and small molecules. And here we have the restricted access molecular imprinted polymer with the BSA capsule. Here, uh, depending on the pH, in a pH higher than the isoelectrical point of this protein from the sample and this protein from the layer, the, the, uh, a charge, a negative charge can be observed in the proteins from the layer and from the sample. And this charge causing the electrostatic repulsion of the proteins, resulting in the exclusion. At the same time, small analytes can penetrate through this BSA layer, assessing the selective binding sites. Here we have uh, micrographies of these materials. Here, the materials only with hydrophilic monomers, and here, the materials with hydrophilic monomers and BSA layer. And you can see the, the difference in terms of uh, particles, in, in terms of uh, uh, microparticles. Uh, this test was carried out in order to observe the ability of this material to exclude proteins. It's a very simple test. Here I have a, H, a conventional HPLC with a valve, a uh, six-port valve, a pump, and a uh, uh, spectrometer, a spec photometer uh, at uh, 200, 220 nanometers. And I injected through the system a BSA solution, a protein solution in water. And this protein solution is percolated through the analytical pathway until the detector. All the injected protein arrived to the detector and I obtained the signal. After I used the same uh, equipment, but here I inserted an, a, a column C. This column, is filled with restricted access molecular imprinted polymer, and the same protein solution was injected. When the solu solution is injected, uh, the protein goes through the column C, filled with the material, and the remaining protein arriving to the detector. Uh, when this experiment was carried out, the peak areas of the in both cases were, were, uh, were very similar, attesting that all the protein injected to the system arrived to the detector. And we have uh, less than 1% of the protein be retained to the MIP column. It's a very interesting result. And here I have uh, the system from Gabriel, it's a chromatogram. A chromatograms, and here I have the column switch liquid chromatography system with two six port valve, two pumps, uh, 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 column C1 with uh, the material restricted access molecular imprinted polymer, and here column two, it's an, the analytical column. And we injected through the system plasma sample without any treatment. Poor plasma sample, fortified with chlorpromazine. And here we have the chromatograms. All the sample preparation protocol were, were, uh, was carried out into the online system and the separation and the detector. And we have these chromatographs for blank, for blank is uh, plasma blank. Here we have plasma fortified with chlorpromazine at these concentrations. And in, the, in, this, in this case, I have a real sample of a patient that used chlorpromazine in this case. Uh, we also prized the selectivity of the restricted access molecular imprinted polymer. Uh, we apprised chlorpromazine and other analyte, other molecules with similar chemical structure to the chlorpromazine. We injected the aqua solution through column through a column filled with the restricted access molecular imprinted polymer. And of course, chlorpromazine, that is the template molecule used to prepare the MIP, the, 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 the polymer, was presented the high retention time, attesting that the material is selective. The material present selective binding sites to be this molecule in comparison with the others. 
Here uh, we have the paper from Mariana. Um, and Mariana obtaining interesting results. But here we have, uh, she, she synthesized four materials, a conventional MIP, like described in the literature. Uh, this MIP wa were, was co covered with uh, hydrophilic monomers. And we have the RAM MIP with hydrophilic monomers. We have the RAM, RAM MIP with uh, BSA layer. And we have our one uh, run it with hydrophilic monomers and BSA layer. And she apprised the ability of this material to exclude proteins. And the results were very interesting. Here I have, um, for example, MIP that you represent in, in, in this point, uh, presented the exclusion capacity of about 15%. In other words, if you percolate through this polymer, a biological fluid, for example, human plasma, probably uh, more than 80% uh, of the proteins from the sample will be retained by the material. When this material was modified in hydrophilic monomere, the exclusion capacity increased to about 90%. At the same line, if the material was covered with the BSA layer, the exclusion capacity was about 90% too. But when uh, uh, this material was covered with hydro both hydrophilic monomers and BSA layer, we have the exclusion capacity of about 100%. This is a very interesting result in terms of sample preparation, in terms of biological sample preparation. And uh, this material can be used for several applications at this slide. Here I have the paper from Lila. When uh, Lila synthesized in a, a restricted access molecular imprinted polymer fiber, uh, the synthesis was, were, was carried out into a glass capillary uh, in the capillary tube. The mixture, the synthesis was inserted into this capillary and the capillary was uh, put in a water beach at 16 degrees. And after the synthesis, the capillary was broken and the fiber was removed. This fiber were, was, was treated with uh, BSEA and with glutaraldehyde and sodium borohydride in order to obtain the the, the BSA layer, and this fiber was used for direct sample preparation uh, to analyze benzodiazepines from plasma sample. Here, I have a, a picture a figure with the fiber. The fiber is inserted into a plasma sample. The analytes are recovered, and the proteins were excluded. Here I have a chromatogram of six benzodiazepines analyzed with this system. Uh, it's a very clean chromatogram attesting the efficiency of the procedure to sample preparation to this, this application. Okay, at this point, in, in order to conclude, uh, we observed that the presence of BSI is very interesting to exclude protein. It's a very interesting way. At this point, we, we proposed uh, the modification of conventional carbon nanotubes in order to obtain restricted access carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are very interesting sorbents because um, we have a high adsorption capacities. We have a high physical and chemical stability, a high superficial area. But if a carbon nanotube is put together uh, a biological sample, a protein sample, the proteins from the sample can be retained on the surface of the polymer. At this point, is very complicated. Uh, then we propose the modification of this carbon nanotube. Here I have a superior view of a carbon nanotube, of a multi wallet carbon nanotube. And this carbon nanotube was modified with a BSA layer like this. And here I have an example a uh, biological sample with lead and with proteins, for example, the proteins 
are excluded by electrostatic repulsion, like uh, the mission is described before, the, and, and lead uh, penetrates through the BSA layer, uh, being retained in the core of carbon nanotubes. Um, here we have two applications of this system for cadmium and lead. And in, in papers from Adriano and Valeria. Here we have uh, microscopies. Microscopies, you can see here uh, conventional carbon nanotubes, commercial carbon nanotubes without treatment. And here we have uh, carbon nanotubes treated with BSEA layer, with the BSEA, forming the BSEA layer. And you can see the difference between both materials. Um, the protein exclusion of uh, the, this material was about 100%. It's important to point it out that if I use conventional carbon nanotubes without treatment, um, the protein exclusion is not higher than 30%. Um, oh, this treatment was very important to improve the ability to exclude proteins. Here we have the systems. Um, uh, flow injection systems with columns, and the analysis were carried out in term spray flame furnace atomic absorption spectrometer. The system, we have a column, the plasma, human plasma sample without any pretreatment, without mineralization, uh, was injected in the system. They are the lead or cadmium were retained in the column and the proteins were excluded. Here in this graphic, we have the molecular absorbance of the ex protein exclusion described here. And here we have the atomic absorption uh, for lead, for example. After five minute, minutes, all the proteins were excluded. The valve, the system is switched and the analytes are eluted and uh, carried out to the flame atomic absorption spectrometer, generating this absorbance. Um, here we have the signals for different plasma samples fortified with uh, con different concentrations of uh, uh, lead and cadmium. The results were very interesting too. And it was possible to analyze metals in atomic absorption spectrometer without mineralization. And, and, and this point is the I believe that is the more important point in this study. To conclude, we have here um, uh, an application, a biotechnological application for a magnetic restricted access carbon nanotubes. We prepare a, a restricted access carbon nanotubes, but we inserted here a magnetic nanoparticle to give this material magnetic susceptibility and in this case, we can use this material in magnetic dispersive solid phase extraction to facilitate the procedure. And the application was carried out for metalloproteins. We use, our main goal was uh, apprised if this material uh, was able to capture the metals from a metal protein. And we use copper zinc superoxidismutase and percolate this protein, this metal protein through this material. Uh, copper and zinc were captured and protein, apple superoxidismutase, that is the protein without metals, were, were, was obtained. This uh, uh, pro procedure was able to capture about 60% of the metals in one cycle. And um, uh, the more interesting result is this, because before the extraction, we measure the uh, activity of this metalloprotein and obtain this result in this graphic. And after the one extraction, the activity of the copper zinc superoxidismutase decreases to this value after extraction. But it's interesting because uh, if the extracted protein uh, is put together with the metals, the activity was recovered, attesting that this procedure was uh, able to capture the metals without modifying the chemical structure of the protein. It's very interesting in terms of to prepare apple prote proteins 
uh, to be used in different studies, for example. And here we have um, uh, the paper from uh, Mariana. Uh, at this point, we think that the many applications of the materials, many restricted access materials, use the, use the BSA layer. But uh, we think that um, a, a poor BSA nanoparticle can also be used in sample preparation. We have some examples in the literature that use um, poor BSA nanoparticles for drug delivery systems, for example, but nothing for sample preparation. Then Mariana synthesized uh, poor uh, BSA nanoparticles by conservation using ethanol. And these particles were prepared, washed, and they dried. And after, we use a glass capillary to, uh, using an hematocrit. This capillary uh, were, uh, was inserted in epoxy glue. This epoxy glue uh, was inserted into dried particles. And after some time, the particles were, were fixed in this region of the probe. This probe wa was used in biological sample preparation in a protocol like this. Here we have a picture of the probe. This probe was inserted into a vial with human plasma sample without any treatment. And the, the analytes were captured and the proteins were excluded. Um, we apprise it for propanolol and aphenolol that are beta blockers. Uh, propanolol has a high affinity for proteins and aphenolol low affinity of pro for proteins. But uh, even for aphenolol, the results were very interesting and it was possible to analyze both, mo both molecules with good validation parameters. And the protein exclusion was about 100%. Okay, here it's a review. If you want more information about the new advances in restricted access materials. And I would like to thank Veblu for this invitation, Federal University of Alfenas, and FAPEMIG, CNPq, CAPS, and FINEP that finance my research. Uh, this is my group. I would like to thank the, my group for, for the works. And uh, thank you for your attention.